First of all, we have the, uh, the lower head grade. Uh, it means more material needs to be processed, uh, means more energy, uh, higher cost for water, uh, and, and, and wears and spares. And then of course we have the water scarcity. Either there is no water or there is uh, a far distance to the, to the sources of the water. And then we have the complexity of the ore. Uh, it's much more difficult to dewater the material. And this is typically due to the fine grinding. And these are the, the factors that we need to handle in today's operation. But over the last year, uh, additional requirements have emerged uh, and set their agenda here. And uh, first of all, we are talking about the dam failure or the high risk of dam failure. Uh, but then we have the sustainability agenda here and really the, the, the uh, license to operate. We are talking about recovery of water or actually I should say the responsible use of water. And the same thing applies to uh, energy uh, or chemicals in the process. We have the social aspects, the social responsibility, legislation, regulation. We have environmental reasons. Uh, and of course, we, we also have the responsibility of, of uh, extract the value in the tailings, meaning reprocessing, reprocessing of uh, existing legacy dams. Um, and we have, of course, the closure of the mine that is, is a part of this. And just recently, uh, I, uh, I have seen that there's a huge pressure coming from the investors as well. It's no longer uh, the matter of finding the technical most suitable uh, equipment or solution. It's about the transformation into a sustainable uh, development. Therefore, it's a meta priority and we are a part of that development. So our elevated uh, view is to challenge the conventional and take into consideration the end of mind strategy. This is a very interesting question. I think that um, if we go back uh, and look into the past, uh, we can see the San Marco accident in Brazil in 2016 as an alarm clock. Um, and it was obvious that the, uh, the activity level went up quite a lot. And, uh, and a lot of mining companies, they were looking into uh, what do we need to do uh, in the, when it comes to the risk of, of the tailing dams, etc. But it never reached the point where the, where the industry uh, went together and, and evaluated the, the, the conventional methods, if, uh, if that's the right thing to do. But in 2019, in Jan January 2019, uh, we had a tragic dam accident uh, in Brazil again. And, and overnight, uh, it changed everything. Suddenly, it becomes a matter of, of uh, life and death. Therefore, the uh, ongoing activities uh, within uh, many mining companies and OEM, the activity level is on a very high level at the moment. From our perspective, uh, uh, it, it became obvious that everybody is looking for a reliable solution to it, and instead of short-term fixes or short-term solutions. I would say we are seeing a typical change or transformation behavior where everybody tries to understand the situation and, and figure out what is the way forward. Many organizations, they are well prepared and they have been working with this for a while, but I would say that a lot of organizations, they are lost or carefully reluctant. Perceptions and a conventional view uh, is still dominating the discussion of what is the way forward. The ability to unlearn and relearn, uh, that will become much more important to figure out what is the way forward here. As an example, only 5% of all tailings generated in 2018 was the water in one way or another. And I, I think the figure speaks for itself. Uh, we need to, to have a sustainable agenda.
First of all, I, I think we have to say there is not a, a solution or one solution. Uh, I think each uh, case is unique. Uh, but right now, dry tailings or filtered tailings, that is the most promising and, and uh, the, the way forward as we see it. In addition, uh, when we're talking about tailings treatment, reprocessing needs to be a part of it. It is an opportunity in environmental uh, reclamation, but it's at the same time it's a good opportunity for, for investment. Treating legacy dams, that is uh, a good opportunity to convert waste into value. In filtered tailings, of course, the filter is the, the core product, and, and, and that is the case uh, for us as well. But with one big difference, if we look at our filter, it's future ready. It means it's, it's for today and it's also for tomorrow. The fastest possible trouble-free dewatering with the maximum capacity at the given uh, moisture content and of course at the lowest possible cost. To achieve this, we have actually designed a, a solution uh, that means that we, we want to control the feed. We simply uh, use our mezzohydrocyclones to, to separate the feed into a fine and a coarse uh, stream. It means the overflow from the hydrocyclones that is directed to the IPS thickener. Uh, and the coarse material that is directed directly to the filter. There is no need of any additional thickening of that product. This provides the, the, the most superior and fastest settling of the fines. At the same time, we are saving a lot of energy and minimizing the use of flocculants. With one fine stream and one coarse stream, now we can find a solution, what is the most efficient way of the water, the, the material. Uh, in principle, there are now two ways of, of uh, uh, filter the material, in addition to the conventional method. We introduce a bimodal uh, mode. It means that we are sending the fine stream to, to some filters, and while the coarse stream is going to other filters. So it's two different configurations, basically. The second alternative, that is what we call staged filtration. Staged filtration could mean many different things, but in, in this case we are saying that we are creating a stream that is optimal for the filtration of that specific material. A big part of this project called VPX filter, that's VPX filter, was to develop something different something new, introducing something new to the market. We've been making this process equipment filtration for about 35 years. We have a good experience of filtration equipment. Now we're taking that to the next level. Um, we are introducing a totally new drive system for the unit, compared to the old we were using hydraulics, which is typically the, the standard for filter equipment in the market today. So what we are introducing now is electromechanical drive, rack and pinion drive for opening and closing the filter. Fast, reliable, we can vary the speed to go faster or slower as needed. We are introducing a high pressure closing system with a tension rod, electromechanical screw drives, a clamping system. So once we are closed with the rack and pinion, we apply the high pressure by the tension rod being clamped to the moving pressure head and rotating the screw drives. Safe, fast, reliable, no hydraulics. Um, we are going up in pressure. Branch standard today is about 10 to 16 bar. Now we are going up to 25 bar. And if needed we can go higher. But we have discovered 25 bar could be a good pressure to use for uh, filtration of difficult water material. For easy to the water material, the 10 bar is enough and we can easily adjust the pressure on this filter, but we have the possibility to go all the way to 25 bar. We are going bigger, 
The existing biggest VPA filter is 11 cubic meter in volume. Now we're up to 36 cubic meter. High pressure, faster, and bigger volume. We big a high capacity filter designed for difficult water material like tailings and other difficult water concentrates. But we can use this filter as a normal VPA filter up to 10 bar, applying air blow or for tailing which doesn't need a low cake moisture. So this is a modular system. There is no limit in length. We just add section of the filters from 60, 90, 120 and we can even go further on the unit. Uh, everything is designed so it fits into the container. Even if this is a big unit, 32 by 4.5 by 4.8 meter, the parts are designed to fit into shipping containers. We have been traveling globally to meet with our customers, to get their input. So through our interaction, we know now what the customer wants. We can give them what they want. We have developed this pilot unit that is the most sophisticated in the market. It can do the high pressure dewatering, it can do the membrane pressing, it can do the air blow drying if needed. We can incorporate this pilot unit with our other pilot units, like our IPS thickness, hydrocyclones, we can create a solution for a customer, not only filter, we can devote with thickener, we can separate the material by the hydrocyclones to be a fine and coarse material. We can introduce other devotering equipment we have, like the tube press, for the ultra fine devotering. So we can separate in two streams to take the VPX, or we can take it to, to a tube press for the really difficult devotering. So with this unit, we have equipped it with a lot of sensors, we have the load cells, we have the sophisticated control system, artificial intelligence. We can evaluate all kinds of materials to be the water, from difficult to the water to easy to the water. That will help our customers to build, to build their business cases for future investment. there are several financial benefits. If we take the IPS thickener, we're talking about less use of, of flocculants or chemicals, uh, but also less use of energy. It means less spent. But also the, the smaller uh, footprint is a huge benefit. If we consider the cost of land and then the cost of civil works, it's a huge financial benefit. In case of cold climates, for example, when you have uh, freezing cold conditions, with a smaller foot footprint, it's also possible to, to put the equipment under a roof. Uh, it means there is no freezing issues. But we can also turn it around and look at if we have a hot and warm condition where the problem is uh, a lot of evaporation. For the same reason, the smaller units, now it can be covered and, and we, we save, do good savings there as well. We can reach a water recovery of up to 90%. I could also add that we have achieved a, a moisture content of the cake that is below 7%. Contrary to uh, the conventional belief, dry tailings uh, is much more efficient from a capex and an opus perspective if you compare to for example wet tailings or paste tailings. But the main financial benefit that is definitely coming from, from the reprocessing. Extracting minerals from, from legacy dams that will help to generate uh, additional revenue but it will also help to clean up uh, tailing dams and it will also help to generate the back uh, filling material that is needed. So combining these, we can actually uh, help our customer to provide an end uh, of mine strategy and help them with the, all the challenges that comes with tailings and the water management. Our analysis actually shows that uh, reprocessing is very attractive from a cost perspective in comparison with virgin material. 
we simply turn waste into value. Our goal is nothing else than transforming tailings management. It's time to replace the old negative uh, risk avoidance position with a new uh, value creation model. We are on a mission and it's happening right now. We strongly believe that within a few years dry tailing will be the new established standard in the mining industry. The industry is changing fast. The major challenge for everyone is to keep up with these changes. At METSO, we are fully committed.